My name is Katharina Schlegel and I'm responsible for all the IFAD shows abroad. Those who are listening might know the IFAD cluster worldwide, which is the leading network for environmental technologies. And we, as an exhibition organizer, are active in China, in South Africa, Turkey, and in particular, of course, also in India, with two shows uh, for the environmental technolo uh, technology. Yeah, it's, it's a challenging or very challenging time for all of us in these days. We are facing a lockdown. Um, we have to stay and work from home. Quite a few of you also have to take care of homeschooling. You have become all teachers now, I suppose, for many of your children. We have to face economic issues. The economic impact on these um, of this corona crisis is quite severe, but also, of course, on the environment. As you can imagine, the exhibition industry is in particular hit by this crisis as our main job and our main objective is to bring people together at one place at one time. But therefore, we are also working on new formats, complementing formats, like we do today with this webinar. And therefore, I'm really, really grateful to my colleagues from IFAD India who have started this initiative. And I'm very proud and grateful to be able to open this first webinar session of IFAD India um, today. Because we think it is very, very important to keep on track, to keep connected in those very challenging, challenging times. And also not to forget the environmental topics, which of course are also still, though we have COVID virus, a very, very um, important topic. Therefore, I'm really grateful now to hand over to our distinguished speakers who are um, willing to share their experience with us today to get in discussion with you and um, to give a focus on how to treat medical waste today. And uh, thank you very much from my side and to all the audience. I'm now also like you, hopefully looking forward to an interesting discussion. And therefore, I would like to hand over now to our moderator, Dr. Modak. Dr. Modak, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Katarina. <clears throat> Good morning to all of you, or good afternoon, good evening, as uh, Katharina said, wherever you are globally. My name is Dr. Harshavardhan Modak. I am Vice President of uh, National Solid Waste Association of India, an NGO involved in uh, solid waste management consultancy. Now, uh, we have gathered here for discussion of uh, how to manage biomedical waste especially in the context of this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, all of you might be wondering what is pandemic? You know, where is a uh, when the particular uh, disease is widespread globally? It is called pandemic. And since it is affecting uh, the world directly or indirectly, the waste management arising uh, from that is uh, has gathered a lot of significance. So in order to uh, uh, Attain to that, we'll be uh, working with some of the experts. These experts are from them are from actual operations, and one is an expert. You know, let me introduce each one of them. Uh, there is one, uh, Dr. Amar Supate, who is the principal scientific officer at uh, Maharashtra uh, Pollution Control Board which is a regulatory authority for the state of Maharashtra, which works under overall guidance of uh, Ministry of Environment and Central Pollution Control Board, which are apex uh, regulatory bodies of government of India. And he is actually handling this particular subject of biomedical waste. So he is right now the man on the spot and uh, he is really uh, looking after all this as far as state of Maharashtra is concerned. The second expert is uh, Dr. Lakshmi Raghupati, who has uh, worked as a director in uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest, which is the uh, uppermost body which decides policy. And uh, based on that, uh, Central Pollution Control Board uh, decides the implementation guidelines and all that. And both of them put together, they 
uh, supervise over all of the states of India. <clears throat> she is retired and she is presently working with Terry, Terry School of Advanced Sciences. Uh, she is a uh, teaching in solid waste management and is a research guide also. And she had a lot of experience of in uh, waste management, uh, various kinds of waste management. Third expert is Mr. Somnath Malgar, who is a director at Mumbai Waste Management, which is an uh, per se operator for this uh, particular waste management activity. And uh, whatever waste comes to them, they take care of that in terms of various guidelines issued to them. So their experience is also very important. Then, uh, of course, uh, there is one, uh, Mr. Vinod Kachadia. He is the uh, uh, he is with association which uh, encompasses all the operators all over India, and he is the president of uh, that particular association. He himself is a director at Distromed Bioclean Private Limited at Gujarat. But because uh, he is uh, supervising all these operators and he is an uh, president of this association, his experience is also very important. And last but not the least is Dr. Bharat Bhushan Nagar, who is a waste management expert. He has worked for last 19 years in various types of uh, waste management. He is a recycling specialist and uh, Presently, he is a consultant to IP Global Limited since April 2016. So, coming back to our discussion, uh, as after this uh, introduction of this panelist, let us look at the overall scenario what is happening in India. Uh, especially in the case of Maharashtra, it is 20% of uh, the uh, affected people which are in uh, India, 20% belong to the state of Maharashtra. And uh, uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, uh, world is concerned, 0.1%. So it is very important. And the role of the Dr. Supate, who is the principal scientific officer of the state of Maharashtra Pollution Control Board, is very important. So let's switch over to him. And uh, I would like to see. This is a, although this is a uh, webinar which is organized for a discussion on medical waste management, many of them, many of the people who are listeners today, uh, they may not know what is exactly bio waste and how does it matter as far as this uh, control of pandemic is concerned. So um, uh, we'll begin with the simple questions. Uh, Dr. Supade, can you kindly define in brief what is biomedical waste? Where does it arise? And uh, lastly, how do you wish that the BMW should be managed? So you start with the definition, please. Over to you, Dr. Supati. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Modak. Uh, uh, I, uh, at the very outset, I thank IFAT India uh, for organizing this uh, important uh, seminar on the subject of uh, COVID based management, especially, which has a great con significance and contest of the day today. Sir, as you uh, rightly said, you know, many of the... Hello. So, Dr. Modak, I think uh, uh, Dr. Supati is having some internet issues. So, could you please uh, take this question to the other panelists? Yeah. I think he's back. I think he's back. Yeah, sorry. He's back. Okay. Okay. There is one more. You are. Huh. Hello. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so, are you, are you yeah, okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Huh. So the uh, biomedical waste is the waste generated during the diagnosis, treatment, or the uh, research or the production of the biomedical uh, 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 products, uh, or the testing of uh, the uh, uh, the patients. 
you know the uh, waste is uh, generated mainly during the uh, uh, the uh, the treatment uh, at the healthcare establishment it includes uh, as well as animal and uh, whatever the waste which is generated that is normally uh, divided into four color codes uh, as which are uh, very much uh, prescribed in the biomedical waste management rules uh, 2016. The rules are uh, promulgated by the Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India uh, in 2016. Earlier it was in 1998, but uh, having the 10 different categories, but uh, now this has been for the, the convenience of the segregation particularly, which has a very important significance in the waste management of the biomedical uh, waste. Uh, this has been divided into four categories, basically. The yellow category, red category, the blue category, and white category. Yellow category is treated as a highly infectious waste. So I would say, sir, uh, as far as this COVID-19 is concerned, you categorize that uh, waste into yellow category. Is it right? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, uh. Since, since this COVID waste, as you all know, that this is highly uh, infectious, and it, it the COVID is normally spread through the one-to-one uh, uh, -one contacts or the contact on the contaminated surface uh, of the uh, uh, the uh, normal the healthy persons or through the droplets of uh, the uh, uh, the patient when he is uh, coughing or sneezing out so this is a uh, very uh, highly contagious uh, uh, virus uh, the virus is uh, known as a novel coronavirus uh, as well so that is why this has been classified into the highly infectious waste and uh, the, the state board and the central pollution control board and all the major agencies which are dealing with uh, this, they have uh, classified it uh, as a, a so highly infectious can I, waste. Can I ask you, sir? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, sir, what is the exact role of M MPCB, the organization with which you work in this particular context? As far as disposal of COVID-19 uh, waste, uh, waste is concerned, what is the role of it? Right. The Maharashtra Pollution Control Board or the any state pollution control board is the directly the implementing agency for the waste management, uh, biomedical waste management in the uh, state jurisdictions. And uh, for Maharashtra, the, the MPCB is the state authority who looks after the enforcement and implementation of the biomedical waste management rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that uh, your board uh, oversees the operations of the, all the units uh, disposing BMW? Yeah, yeah. We, we are looking after all the, the uh, occupiers, particularly uh, the hospitals, which are dealing with. And now in, in this context of COVID, even the municipal uh, local bodies or the health department uh, the officials who are looking after the containment areas or isolation areas and uh, the isolated households, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we are looking mm -hmm. after uh, their uh, waste generation and as well as the management uh, through the common biomedical waste statement facilities. Uh so you ensure the um, compliance with uh, the guidelines which are given by you, right? Yes, not only by us. Uh, uh, the Central Pollution Control Board has also come on, uh, uh, come up with the uh, elaborate uh, biomedical waste guidelines and the manuals and all that uh, uh, since mm -hmm. uh, long, uh, since the 2016 mm -hmm. onwards. Various guidelines mm -hmm. are uh, issued, and uh, in this particular context of COVID-19. The CPCB on 25th of March has uh, elaborated uh, guidelines in detail and also the responsibilities of the local bodies, uh, state pollution control board, common facilities, the mm -hmm. hospitals, path labs and all that. So we are looking after the overall implementation of these guidelines. So it's good thing that you pointed out that Ministry of Environment and Forest as uh, and through CPCB has issued certain guidelines for dealing with this uh, COVID-19. Fortunately, we have another panelist over here who has directly worked under with the uh, Ministry
Ministry of Environment and Forest. And as a, as a result of that, she has uh, also a good experience of working of CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board also. So, uh, Dr. Lakshmi, the, can I ask you a certain question of uh, what have they done as far as this pandemic is concerned? Because I know as far as uh, biomedical waste is concerned, they had long back in the year 2016, they have given the modified uh, guidelines. Now, COVID-19 has come up later on. So, especially with respect to this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, has this uh, two institution given anything specific, special uh, for dealing with this uh, dangerous waste? Dr. Lakshmi, please. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, Can you unmute? Uh, did you? Hello. Yeah. My mic is. Could you hear? No, I can't. My mic is on. Could you hear? We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. See, let me. So Dr. Supate has explained yeah. uh, here the role of role of state pollution control body mm -hmm. uh, about uh, dealing with this uh, dangerous waste mm -hmm. of uh, of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now, well, he mentioned that uh, the guidelines have been also been issued by MOEF through CPCB. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, for, especially for this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Hmm. So, can you kindly elaborate uh, and highlight uh, whatever is especially done for that? Okay. Uh, I'll just. Uh, 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 good morning, everybody. And I should at the outset, I should thank IFAT India to have taken this initiative. And nobody even thought about what's going to happen with the biomedical waste as a result of uh, COVID-19. So initially, even when we were doing the biomedical waste, we had another struggle like hepatitis and HIV. So taking cognizance of that, we formulated the biomedical waste regulations in 90, as early as 1998, considering the highly infectious waste category, about which Dr. Supate also mentioned about yellow, yellow containers or yellow bags. So those, those wastes are segregated and specially taken for the incineration purposes or they are burnt. They are, not, they are converted into ash. Today we have in the 2016 regulation, we have also included the in, uh, plasma pyrolysis, which is safer incinerator process by which your heat treatment is safer because even though incineration is banned in many places. So we have taken that plasma pyrolysis as one of the options for disposal of highly infectious waste, which actually converts all the waste into a small uh, globular mass it is it doesn't turn into ash because ash disposal was a problem with the inf incineration so the covid virus after the covid had come ministry had taken a few steps ministry had actually requested the cpcb to uh, prepare the guidelines the cpcb guidelines uh, almost have uh, gone through the entire step of all the guidelines guiding principles which were given by them for the earlier guidelines which was elaborate on management of biomedical waste in general but they have taken specific steps per pertaining to the COVID-19 virus so that they can have they can also look at certain um, fallouts of the COVID-19 act activity especially in terms of they have also um, seen the what what is the uh, regulatory me mechanism or the guideline given by WHO because WHO is the apex authority global authority so if keeping in line with that they have they have first of all the MOEF has prescribed the prevention what we talk in terms of washing your hands or coughing with the mouth closed or wearing the masks and all using all the personal protective equipments etc using of it because this was not being so widely used now with the covid there's a real threat to life so they are using it more so we can see that another thing that um, the the distance the social distance all these things were basic guidance which was given by moef MOUD, no, Ministry of Urban Development and Ministry of yes. Health, all the three. Huh? Dr. Lakshmi, can I interrupt you? you yeah. know, we are talking about the biomedical waste. These yes. are the guidelines. Biomedical waste the here, we have two categories out for COVID. One would be the uh, categories of waste which have to be incinerated, which goes in the yellow bag. 
The other categories like the shops, the needles, the glassware, everything, the shops which are going to be there from COVID, they have to be put in puncture-proof containers and they have to be taken care of by the um, um, disposal facility. Now, all the waste from this, when you look at the responsibility of the disposal facility, which I think somebody is going to speak on that, they become the most important organization to pick up that kind of a waste and take it to their facility and treat it accordingly. So that part of the guideline in the CPCB guideline, they have also made certain um, important mention about the control of the virus in terms of not allowing it to spread and also seeing that there has to be certain um, uh, guidelines for the disposal facility because once the, if we look at the handling definition, it, it very clearly says from segregate, source segregation to the final disposal. So all through storage, transportation, everything comes. And all this is the responsibility of the biomedical waste facility. So the facility, since fortunately we have a facility owner, he should be able to give us the insight into how he has been doing it. Because practical yeah. things and what theoretically. One more aspect from the ministry. There has been to take an abundant caution. Ministry has also intimated to the national parks, sanctuaries, Tiger reserves where animals and natural life is persisting. There also they have mentioned that they should take precautions such that if the animals are found to have some respiratory problems or something, the symptoms may also appear in animals. So that also has been. So the broader perspective has been taken by the ministry. The actual operational things in the form of guidelines have been given by the CPCB. And they are as ascribing to the disposal yeah. Yeah. to be burnt that is incineration incineration yeah. is the option yeah. that has been given. thank you thank you dr Lakshmi. thank you very much uh, so, uh, so the listeners uh, what we have heard <laughs> just now two regulatory representatives from regulators one is a state pollution control body and the other one is the, from ministry of environment and forest as well as uh, central pollution control board so overall you will you will have uh, understood that uh, these uh, the guidelines have been issued by them and they are also trying to implement them ensuring their their compliance with respect to them uh, at various levels from the operators now the question actual of arises of actual the destruction of that uh, which is a very uh, dangerous uh, waste is actually how it is destroyed so if uh, there is this responsibility as dr lakshmi has uh, informed that it falls on the operators so from operator side, we have one Mr. Somnath, who has uh, uh, who has already been introduced and he's actually handling one particular facility near Mumbai. Uh, so I would uh, turn to, um, uh, to Mr. Somnath and can I ask you a certain question? Can you please elaborate how your units do all this from start to end? Start to end means how the waste, is, either you collect the waste or the waste comes to you and then onwards, so whether you segregate and then uh, put it into disposal uh, channel uh, as is prescribed. Can you kindly elaborate on that, please? Yeah, good morning and thank you, Dr. Mohudat. Uh, as Dr. Supath and uh, Dr. Lakshmiya has mentioned, uh, there is a guidelines and procedure. Even uh, the specific guidelines is given for the COVID-19 disposal. There is a specific procedure is given right off of that. The simply, if I explain on the operation point of view and disposal point of view for the COVID-19, the first thing is uh, the collective will be done with the, the facility who is uh, disposing the biomedical waste facility. And uh, as for the guidelines, uh, the wherever the waste is generating, that is COVID-19 waste is generating, it might be the isolation center, it might be the quarantine center, it might be the treating hospitals, wherever. They have to put that particular bag, material in a yellow color bags. That is after disinfecting them. That is the disinfection will be done. Autoclave will be done. So after that, uh, that put into the particular bin, which is named as a COVID-19 waste for an easy identification. Okay. In, in this process, the one simply thing we have made it. In this, there is no storage of the waste. Whatever generated, intimation immediately, then the special vehicle will go. And in that, there is a special important part of this is that trained people is there. 
so we have a very much trained in, in fact have waste handling people is that we have trained people for handling the infectious waste the team will go to the specific kits again there is a guidelines for the specific kit precaution kits is there and uh, the, the bag whichever is kept separately again we do some disinfection in that and that bag will be loaded into the biomedical vehicle and again in that the vehicle should be very specifically for that particular waste only in that there is no other biomedical waste will be collected because we are treating this other separate uh, waste uh, infectious waste so that only covid waste will be collected in that particular vehicle and that vehicle straight away come uh, transported to the facility without any interruption that the directly come to the disposal facility again uh, including the vehicle we do some disinfection uh, of that particular vehicles again spraying some disinfection materials on the bags as well as the container which is carrying out and that waste directly unloaded and it will be fitted to the incinerator so there is no again i am emphasizing i am on the storage there is no storage in that particular waste so straight away put into the incinerator uh, which is in the temperature of 1050 degree centigrade in that temperature and material or entire the infections or bacteria will be in the burn into that so uh, that will be the burn into that incineration that is the incineration is having the control the incineration is specific uh, nothing but the burning the infectious waste in the controlled manner with the uh, with a lot of pollution control equipment scrubbing system mechanism in there so their entire waste will be burned into uh, that so this is a, this is a, the right to end means a collection to disposal there is no storage in this activity so <laughs> so uh, okay thanks for your uh, elaborate explanation about that but uh, apart from see there are as you mentioned some of them are incinerated so there is no question about that they definitely things are, will be taken care of as far as infection is concerned but others uh, as well, how do you confirm that effectively covid uh, by uh, 19 uh, so, biomedical waste has indeed been this uh, i mean disposed safely i mean how do you ensure i mean do you take some samplings or uh, how do you go about that so, uh, so, I'll, I'll be very okay. yeah, yeah yeah dr mohan that only i mentioned there is a specific instruction specific guidelines to each and every healthcare establishment quarantine center so that particular it has to be put in a separate bins with a separate bag with the covid 19 so that is whatever we i am talking about i am talking about only related to the covid waste so which is collecting and which is disposing of with the high temperature at the incinerator so here there is no other point mix uh, i am not saying that i am mixing it some other waste and all which is not happening in this particular case mm -hmm. no so that is one about i had said that whatever has been incinerated there is no doubt about that because yeah. it gets definitely destroyed yeah. The other, uh, Dr. Lakshmi, if you recall, she had mentioned about the sharps and uh, one which is non-incinerable, like metallic and other things. Yeah. However, they yeah. have been used in treatment of uh, COVID-19 patients. And as a result of this collection, it has come to you for uh, disposal, appropriate Correct. disposal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's so, a very perfect question. Uh, so, Dr. Mulak, in that, there are two parts. Is there, uh, one is highly infectionable waste put into the yellow bag. That the material will be again kept into the separate things that will go for the autoclaving. So that is a, again the simplest uh, the, the method is for the disinfection. That autoclaving will be done in uh, the high pressure and high temperature in that the entire material will be disinfected. So which is again the clean. This is one of the second method is autoclaving. I see. So you have been mentioning about disinfection. Uh, yeah. Can you kindly exactly say who and how is it uh, disinfected? I mean, is there any specific chemical used in that at your end or at the hospital end? Sir, 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 as per the procedure, first it has to be done at the auto, uh, the hospital end, that is the auto clearing method. Then auto clearing is it, uh, the equipment where high temperature and high pressure will be applied. It is a simple in general language for the non-technical people from the audience I'm telling you. It will it is, it is work as a simply pressure cooker. In, in sudden pressure right. and pressure, that entire metal will be disinfected into that. So there is a right. auto clearing is there. So that right. auto clearing will be done at our facility. It is initially it will be done at the waste generation source at the generation. Mm -hmm. I see. So uh, in some of the videos or some of the uh, you know news reels etc., what we have seen that people are spraying something at uh, wherever places they are getting, collecting things. We saw them spraying something. 
What is that spray uh, uh, consisting of? So, so normally that is a sodium hypochlorite solution. That is one of the disinfectant is there. So that is a solution which is sprayed on the various biomedical waste and disinfectants and uh, uh, most of the obvious disinfection is there. One percent sodium hypochlorite solution will be spraying on that for the disinfection purposes. So this is okay. disinfectant. I see. So audience, uh, you you are you have. Uh, uh, heard uh, Mr. Somnath uh, giving a very elaborate explanation of how exactly this biomedical waste is uh, uh, disposed and treated ultimately safely so that the, the, the infection doesn't get spread uh, from then on, you see. And uh, as a result of that, uh, now uh, there are so many operators working all over the country, you know. And uh, it is it will be interesting to actually know how do they operate. And see, we have uh, uh, heard to Mr. Somnath, which is one of the operators. You know, so there are very many operators all over the country, and uh, it is not possible to meet each one of them. But uh, fortunately, we have one uh, who is the president of their association. Mr. We know that I will be coming to you uh, for certain questions uh, regarding this particular BM uh, medical disposal units. Can you kindly highlight the how how the operational difficulties? which you have experienced in that. Mr. Vinod? Yes. Good morning, all of you. Good morning. Uh, yes. As you all are aware that the common biomedical treatment facility is an essential link and have been playing a sustainable role in the disposal of the COVID-19 waste at present. Because all the facilities are working on the toes and we are all the common facility from the all, all over India are with the force which are working on the prevent the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. At present, all the facilities all over India are working on, especially are working on the COVID-19 disposal waste. Approximately four, more than 40 metric tons per day in India mm -hmm. are disposing the COVID-19 waste. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are facing, we are facing some problems uh, during mm -hmm. the operational because we, we are working in biomedical waste field since uh, no, 2002 when uh, law is implemented. At that time, we are working on the biomedical waste management rules since uh, before the COVID-19 epidemics. But since March 2020 to 25, CPCB has published one uh, CPCB guideline as mentioned, Mr. Somnath Ji. We all are working strictly on these uh, COVID-19 waste because we are talking at present on the COVID-19 waste. So I am particularly highlighting all the problems which was mentioned in the COVID-19 waste. We are all Certain. the yes, yes. All the facilities are uh, strictly following the COVID-19 CPCB guideline. Hmm. As Somnath ji mentioned that we have four, uh, CPCB had identified four to five center we have, uh, which are the generating uh, COVID-19 waste. One is the isolation hmm. ward where patient is positive patient and suspected patient are admitted. Second is the quarantine waste where the possibility of the COVID-19 patient was, those are uh, contacted with the family members they are there as there. So third is the COVID sampling test laboratory. And fourth, mm -hmm. fourth are the home care facility. Those, mm -hmm. those uh, people are uh, quarantined at their home. So mm -hmm. we are collecting, collecting uh, COVID-19 waste from four places. All the, all the, all the waste are, comes to our facility with the precaution mentioned in the CPCP guideline. After where, where, uh, which time we are collecting the biomedical waste, where, when uh, time of the uh, so, uh, schedule of the time which uh, uh, facility comes our facility all the time all the disposal time or we are the all the facility are keeping the record and submitted to state pollution control oh. board daily huh. uh, how At do you operate financially i mean financially yes, how is yes, it yes. all this being operated yes where it is very difficult time for us because as per as per the financial point of view we are facing lot of burden because of the daily precaution you are you are mentioned that the pp kit is very costly Daily PPE kit, we have to provide our staff. Uh, each and every facility, every 20 to 30 uh, person are there working in the facility. So financial parts is very difficult. Uh, it is very crucial for us. We are bearing more financial burden at present, but we have accept with the challenge. We have put our representation to the government also to provide the PPE kit, to provide the, our staff should be include Pradhan Mantri, Vima Yojana, but no, not any favorable reply from the from the government. Still, we are okay. asking to still we are asking for the government to provide some uh, uh, safe safeguard to us because 
our staff is working at highly risk as as similar as the uh, hospital staff so okay so pradhan man to our staff also because there is not uh, approximately 15 to 20000 staff are there in the entire common facility it is the not big it is okay. not big financial burden to the uh, government but is the, but it yeah. will be boost up our activity second is sir, second is we are, hello sir thank second you. we are ha. second sir it, because it is the hmm. uh, uh, most needed because we are facing the difficulty to staff to carry on their work staff are not mm -hmm. wants to work in this situation because they are uh, i uh, oh they are uh, no no oh, this is the risk and their family member are uh, not willing to go there so it is our prime responsibility responsibility mm -hmm. to carry on staff on work so okay. we are asking to the government for this okay sorry to interrupt you now we have to also see in anticipation of all these things uh, we can expect some problems also as uh, some of them have already been uh, explained by mr vinod but apart from that uh, you know they there is one murphy's law you know whatever murphy's law says that whatever is supposed to go wrong shall go wrong you know so in if you use this particular uh, uh, what you call philosophy uh, we also expect some surprises uh, some glitches in this particular uh, operations so uh, i would like to ask uh, dr supate uh, do you find any surprises in this do you have any idea have you come across any examples where uh, uh people have interpreted something on their own and uh, they have given uh, big burden to you know for disposal which has actually should not be uh, should not have been given etc can i can you elaborate on that uh, dr supate yeah very very uh, right question sir uh, in fact you know uh, in anticipation of all these issues which are likely to come up because it is not that the covid is covid based or, uh, or the covid patients are handled uh, in the uh, hospitals alone as uh, vinod uh, has uh, elaborated that it is uh, there are four types of different establishments from where the waste is to be collected and uh, everybody is not uh, aware of the biomedical waste requirement uh, uh, segregation requirement the storage requirement the disinfection at source the Yes. Color coded bags and all that. So there, there is a uh, 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 larger chance that uh, the waste can get mixed and the majority of waste can get infected. You know, the biomedical okay. waste rules are uh, primarily aiming at the segregation of highly infectious waste. And COVID okay. being a highly infectious waste, uh, the uh, the MPCB has. Uh, uh, given the guidelines on 28th of the March itself. for the uh, the uh, common treatment facilities as well wherein they were asked to uh, comply with certain uh, precautions which are over and above the normal guidelines which are issued by the cpcb as well you know and uh, certainly the, we are facing some of the problems in the different uh, local bodies where uh, particularly in mumbai pune and uh, the other major areas where the different quarantine wards are there different containment wards are there the places are there isolation hospitals are there you know many times you know the, the, the since the patients are isolated the normal uh, uh, municipal solid waste or the food waste is mixed with uh, the uh, infectious waste and then oh, that, that that comes uh, to be as a great burden to the common facility so we again on 4th of april we have issued one more guideline to the uh, state uh, particularly to the local bodies who are mixing this waste and putting it uh, into the biomedical waste so that is uh, putting a lot of burden and since we have very limited uh, resources uh, with us we we have asked them to uh, disinfect this uh, uh, municipal solid waste which is not likely to be contaminated uh mm -hmm. by the uh, others who are not directly dealing with the covid uh, patients or uh, uh, the uh, 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 the doctors okay okay, okay. so uh, now we have heard all of the people regulators as well as operators at various levels and uh, now uh, 
since they are very busy in actually day to day work you know there has to be a, some third person view for the betterment and everybody agrees that there is always a scope for betterment and for which a third person view can only be taken by a external expert uh, in that capacity we have uh, one dr bharat bhushan nagar in our uh, panel so i would like to turn uh, our attention to dr bharat bhushan nagar uh, can you as an expert in the field of waste management uh, say something from your view point that is there any uh, uh, scope for betterment of this process dr bharat bhushan hello dr bharat bhushan are you there uh, yes sir i am audible sir ha huh. uh, okay. did you hear me or uh, shall i yes, repeat sir. my yes, question sir. please no no sir yeah. uh, i can as, a, as, a, as an external expert uh, do, uh, who is uh, actually quite uh, experienced in various kinds of waste management do you feel there is any exp uh, scope for betterment of all these things uh, sir uh, actually i feel there is a lot of scope because uh, uh, normally what is happening uh, for the most infectious waste categories uh we are like you know uh, there would not there would not be a normal scenario whereby uh, the waste quantity is very less and you have a nearby facility of common biomedical waste to do the incineration so in that case what i would suggest you know uh, we can always look on for heavy duty uh, autoclaving or micro wave system whereby uh, we can always disinfect the uh, the covid 19 waste and and go for a deburial because uh, because uh, the sprawl of the disease is quite long and it would mm -hmm. be it would take time in in some time uh, in cases uh, it would take time to transport mm -hmm. the waste to the particular facility so uh, we can also mm -hmm. look for a decentralized approach uh, we, we can mm -hmm. uh, we can have access to the high pressure uh, autoclaving or micro waving system whereby the infectious stream mm -hmm. of the waste can be disinfected and it can go for a deburial mm -hmm. and this method is also mm -hmm. specified as per the biomedical waste management rules so this would be i agree with you sir but uh, uh, if you can you can uh, can you not think of some modern technologies you know for waste disposal because burial and all these things uh, are i mean have been in vogue for quite a certain time and uh, looking at the difficulties in that do you have anything in mind as far as modern technologies are concerned like uh, something uh, i have heard about something like uh, uh, asian development bank is trying to advocate uh, putting this all in cement plants you know as far as incineration is concerned like co processing of msw or rdf they also think this is new one second is dr lakshmi mentioned about plasma or other thing somebody is also speaking of uh, ultraviolet uh, light also so i mean uh, i'm just trying to mention i'm i'm not the expert you are the expert or even dr supade can also appropriately join in Uh, can you i mean consider all these aspects they for a quicker and uh, uh, more effective uh, disposal of the waste dr uh, uh, dr bharat yeah. sir sir regarding the co processing actually i don't think it is a feasible option at the moment because uh, seeing the quantity of the waste and the infectious nature of the waste uh, and seeing the, uh, the the you know mechanical degree of uh, input uh, uh, into the feeding of the cement kiln i would not uh, uh, like you know ratify this uh, disposal uh, way of doing it uh, yes uh, like uh, the technology like plasma waste uh, plasma technology which dr uh, dr lakshmi has also discussed upon i feel that there is a big uh, financial constraint uh, for that and we need to buy some time to testify that uh, the indian institute of plasma research based in ahmedabad uh, can take lead in that uh, because they have been the front runner in terms of you know supplying the plasma uh, Only for medical waste treatment, but we need Actually, to have some time. I had visited. I uh, have. Uh, uh, I had visited sir, uh, this uh, institute, sir, which you are talking about, uh, 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 Ahmedabad. Uh, they have uh, finalized design for one particular uh, small quantity. I mean, which is very suitable for uh, uh, this biomedical waste. Is a few tons or so maximum. They, I mean, it is very compact. And looking at the temperature at which they uh, treat this. Uh, the, the use of plasma and the price also because uh, the, it had been very very costly so long as it was yes it is very costly but, uh, no but uh, so the development which has been done by uh, amdavad uh, research institute they give guarantees for that and it is at a, a fraction of a cost compared to that i have also 
uh, worked in importing of plasma technology as well as i have worked with the uh, i mean uh, the indigenous development of it also at at least two three places if we do it indigenously naturally it is going to cost less and amdavad the institute is vouching for that so from that point of view sir for uh, hello sir i'm coming to you sir i'm coming okay. to you sir i'm asking the question to dr bharat bhushan nagar so wh what do you say is about that uh, sir, particular sir, definitely i would uh, sir i would always uh, vouch for the development of indigenous technology based upon we can always target the technologies which are being used for water water filtration uh, like ozone uh, like uh, uh, like heavy chlorine dosing so these could also be tried but but sir at the moment uh, the, the need of the hour is to use, use already the commercially available technologies but definitely we should uh, we should start making our efforts and establish the uh, the replacement technologies for the present ongoing options definitely ready for it dr mr vinod now you can come take it sir i want to highlight sir i want to highlight on the plasma pyrolysis plasma hmm. pyrolysis uh, pilot project was done before 8 to 10 years back but due yeah. to high cost due to, due to high cost it is not possible in because of the disposal cost per kg it approximately 8 to 100 rupees per per kg so it is not, not possible as the financial base second thing is uh, bharat bhushan ji said the uh, uh, about the domestic waste domestic waste mm -hmm. uh, mixing with the biomedical waste it is the crucial not it is the heavy crucial uh, uh, issue at Problem. present because are coming with the uh, mixing of the domestic and biomedical waste all the mm -hmm. biomedical waste incinerator are designed for the biomedical waste uh, disposal mm -hmm. so if uh, mm -hmm. more quantity comes as the as far as the domestic it is very difficult to dispose so proper segregation okay. should be required and another thing if considering mm -hmm. this all the facts cpcb has mm -hmm. made the provision if quantity becomes used in future i mean means mm -hmm. in covid situation mm -hmm. hazardous waste uh, incinerator are uh, make stand by for the uh, disposal of the covid 19 is required all right so we are in the last 10 minutes of the uh, webinar and as we have promised earlier that we will be uh, taking over some questions but uh, some of, there are plenty of questions which have already come up but uh, some of the questions came up yesterday itself so let us first attend to that uh, it was to dr supade uh, there is one uh, there are couple of questions from dr homi mulan to dr supade uh, are you supa are you there mr dr supade yes yes i yes, am here i am here so what he, he says what will be plans for the biomedical waste in terms of stages 3 and 4 what are plans for on site bmw disposal like uh, mobile incinerators and uh, what about incineration burial or refrigerated storage of corpses uh, can you attend uh, i mean attend to that particular question please yeah uh, the first and foremost question regarding the what are the plans uh, for the stage 3 and 4 Uh, oh, yes. I would, uh, as far as the Maharashtra is concerned, we have almost 30 common biomedical waste treatment facilities uh, mm -hmm. uh, spread across the state. Almost each mm -hmm. district has been covered into that. And uh, moreover, we have almost 300 plus uh, uh, deep burial facilities at our public health centers uh, in the rural areas or in uh, 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 the hilly areas, particularly. so these are the public facilities available to take care of all this waste and uh, if at all it comes to uh, somebody was asking about the use of uh, uh, cement kilns for the disposal but we would be not recommending this as as of today because this uh, this is not uh, studied as so far uh, whether it can take care and whether the Uh, cement kilns are ready to take that kind of waste. There are certain policy issues also, but uh, certainly the CPT in the guidelines has uh, already uh, elaborated. In case uh, 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 God God forbid we we don't enter into the three and uh, four stage, but in case that situation arises, 
we can use the hazardous waste facilities temporarily uh, to mm -hmm. treat uh, the uh, huge quantities of waste if uh, particular the, though the maharashtra has enough capacity the, the rest of the country may not be having mm -hmm. and that can be uh, uh, definitely going to the hazardous waste uh, treatment facilities okay. Okay. or okay. or a option is there then uh, you can go for the deep burial with hypo treatment Hypo treatment has been very well uh, elaborated and uh, accepted treatment for the uh, COVID waste uh, across the country and WHO uh, and CDC, everybody has uh, uh, vouched for that. Thank you. Uh, there is one peculiar question from Kozi Kode. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a housekeeping manager of a hospital from Kozi Kode. He says once the patients use linen, is disinfected using hypochlorite as prescribed? Can we reuse the same or it should be compulsorily be sent to the incineration facility? Yeah, a very good question. Actually, this is the practical problem that the housekeeping managers are facing in the uh, COVID waste management facilities. You know, uh, the first and foremost, uh, the option uh, should be that they should be using the disposable uh, linens and the gowns mm -hmm. for the doctors. But uh, if that is not possible, then the CDC has already given certain guidelines for how, how to disinfect this waste for, for reuse. The guidelines are uh, in uh, the uh, uh, personal protectives which uh, are not soil. They can be treated with 0.5. Then they, mm -hmm. they should be packed into double uh, layered bag, uh, the non-leachable bags, and uh, mm -hmm. then uh, upon uh, they are arriving at the laundry, they should be mm -hmm. least handled uh, due precautions and protectives. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Then uh, they, they can they, 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 that linen can be again put into one percent hypo for thirty minutes, and then mm -hmm. it can go for the uh, regular uh, detergent uh, washing at 60 to 90 degrees uh, uh, temperature that that's the uh, but, in most, the, uh, but okay. if it is a so, in, soiled one that has to be necessarily go for the incineration in, in the euro bags but uh, principally if uh, this is not the way you are saying i mean if it is not soiled and all that once it goes through the kind of thing which you are yeah it can be now, reused can it, it can be reused be, it, it can, can be reused, reused. Yeah. However, I mean, I would say abundant precaution has been taken. You see, once you give a leeway for interpretation, whether it is soiled and or not. So soil, uh, soil means of, uh, if somebody is vomited on that, some uh, liquid uh, is there. Apparently, you can identify uh, if the blood stains are there. Then that has, that is a soil thing, and that has to go for right. the incineration. Once it is given to subject to interpretation, you know there are many unscrupulous elements which are already uh, coming into play, and they try to give things uh, for recycling and reuse. You know, so uh, as an abundant precaution, as you mm. very rightly said uh, earlier in the morning, it should be treated for as a right. incinerable waste, and it should be yes. disposed of accordingly. Now there is a one particular question coming up for the liquid waste, which is arising out of uh, sewage treatment plant. You know, house hospitals and other facilities, they have, they are generating sewage, you know. And there are some reports, if you have seen in the internet or so, uh, there is a leakage of uh, COVID-19 virus in sewage also. And they, it has created quite a lot of problems in the uh, Netherlands. Uh, this is what the uh, first thing when it, it was detected over there. So, how do we go about treating liquid waste? Though in the biomedical waste uh, guidelines, you have given elaborate uh, treatment which is to be done. And you have uh, recommended ending it up with the uh, chlorine and other facilities. But can you kindly emphasize with respect to COVID-19? Uh, liquid waste, you can uh, again uh, uh, divide into two uh, types of liquid waste. One is the liquid waste which is generated during the patient's care, you know, some body fluids and all that, that that has to be going for the incineration straight away in a yellow bag. There is no issue. But when it comes to these uh, sewage kind of thing or the any uh, washing is, which is uh, coming out as a sewage or waste water as such, you know, that, that needs to be uh, uh, treated in a conventional uh, treatment system and subsequently it has to be given the uh, treatment of uh, chlorination 
uh, for that, uh, maybe with the hypo or uh, the other chlorine uh, compounds. Mm -hmm. There's one question from Dr. Ajay Pradhan from Delhi. Uh, he is saying that uh, special hazardous do states have a specialized incinerator to burn them in a biomedical for these biomedical waste? A specialized incinerator means the, the whatever is prescribed as a secondary chamber and uh, what you call as a specific residence time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do we really have those kind of incinerators? Yes, as far as the Maharashtra is concerned, or even the uh, uh, country is concerned, you know, we have almost uh, 194 common treatment facilities working as of now uh, across the country. And in Maharashtra, we have almost 30 facilities. But everybody is complying with uh, the uh, two second uh, residence. Uh, and it's time and uh, the two chambers uh, with uh, 850 mm -hmm. and 1100 uh, degrees mm -hmm. temperatures. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, with capacity, sir, I sorry for interrupt you. It is the capacity. Yeah. It is in India, all the common biomedical treatment have a facility 650 metric ton per day. That's very good addition, sir, Dr. Mm -hmm. Vinod. I was to come to you because you are uh, looking at the pan-India scenario. And in terms of incinerators, you can also throw some light uh, about the incineration facility. Dr. Yes. Mr. Vinod. Uh, yes. About the incineration capacity, pan-India, all over India. Uh, do we have a sufficient capacity and do we have uh, specialized incinerators? Yes, yes. Because all over India, at present, uh, uh, 500 metric tons waste are generated, and uh, we have 650 metric ton per day capacity in this COVID particular in this COVID pandemic. In this particular in this COVID pandemic, hello. Only at present yeah. 40 uh, all the waste quantity has come because lockdown period. Uh, quantity of the general uh, general BMW waste is uh, comes less. This is matlab 50 percent, mm -hmm. 50 to 60 percent quantity at present. So our incinerator are mm -hmm. capable to install all the COVID-19 waste at present 40 to 50 metric ton for entire India generating. Maybe it will be increased, but we are in enough quantity uh, capacity to dispose it. Mm -hmm. Moreover, more uh, doctor, uh, Doctor Moda, ah. moreover, what is happening? Yeah. You know, due to this lockdown and all, the uh, mm -hmm. hospital inpatient uh, number is uh, reduced drastically. Yes. And that's why yes, the, the yes. normal uh, course uh, biomedical waste uh, coming to the common facility has been reduced to 30 40 yes. percent. And uh, as far as the Maharashtra is concerned, you know, we have hardly a uh, few uh, tons of waste coming uh, from the COVID uh, uh, isolation facilities. And but the proper, but proper segregation, okay. so there, there is one flip side of it then, huh? But proper segregation of the biomedical was yeah, yeah, must please. required. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, that, uh, let me emphasize that particular point again and again, uh, which Dr. Supathya as well as Mr. Vinod has emphasized. That uh, out of maybe ignorance or out of uh, over cautiousness and all that, everything which is uh, touched by the patient or so. Uh, even the common municipal solid waste, uh, etc., is also being thrown as a biomedical waste, which should not happen. Otherwise, it is putting unnecessary burden on this yes. thing. the hospital, hospitals and uh, nursing homes and etc. should take uh, care of this particular problem. Because when it all everything comes at the operator's end, then he realizes that this should not should not have been there at all. You know, yes. so uh, at that point of time, it is, I mean, things have gone beyond his uh, requirement. You know? So uh, that is why the utmost precaution has to be taken at the hospital and nursing homes and wherever the waste is generated, there they should properly segregate it and whatever is uh, food waste, etc. It should go Dr. as a uh, other. Yeah, yeah, please, huh. please, sir. Uh, I am uh, looking at my chat room. There are a lot many questions which people are asking about. Uh, since there yes. is a time constraint, I would uh, uh, simply request all of them uh, to yes. uh, 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 post uh, their questions to, uh, uh, through this iPad uh, platform to us, uh, which can be addressed. Yes. And uh, simultaneously, Sorry. I would recommend, uh, recommend them to visit the uh, uh, websites which are uh, uh, 
uh, right. the, the national and international websites, so particularly the WHO, the CDC, then uh, Ministry of uh, right. Public Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, State Government uh, Health Departments. You know, everybody is coming right. with uh, the uh, guidelines which are uh, on the basis of the earlier experience in the uh, other uh, countries as well. Uh, uh, faced by the WHO and uh, CDC and others. So th that will be a good idea to uh, get acquainted with uh, the uh, necessary uh, precautions one has to take. Only a small thing which I would uh, request the viewers to uh, take into account that this is a contagious, highly contagious uh, uh, virus and uh, the, uh, it is necessary that you should be taking care of yourself and not touching the the infected surface and as well as uh, not uh, getting into uh, the contacts with the infected people uh, the, the doctors and the healthcare workers are taking their efforts they, they are trying their best to uh, take care of the patients which they have uh, and uh, the government is also taking a lot of efforts in containing containment of all these uh, patients and this is as well. So it is the request from uh, our end as the state government and the central government as well that the uh, ensure and uh, educate the doctors and the other people to segregate the waste and hand it over to the common facilities so uh, in a proper way so that we we, we are winning this battle. Uh, there are a few questions regarding the technologies, various technologies available. I, but I would simply again say the government of India and the, the, the state governments have enough uh, facilities to take care of. And uh, as of now, this is not the right time to look into the new technologies uh, or the new uh, establishment of the plants. Uh, thank you, sir. Dr. Modak? requesting the organizers to Meet kindly them. compile all these things and uh, we they will be posting it to us and we will be uh, taking all of us all efforts to address each one of that <coughs> and it will be uh, communicated back to the uh, people the all the answers Dr. Uh, Mr. Mr. We, we will take some live questions now some live questions so uh, there, is, there is no time sir this, uh, can, can we, sir, we extend sir, by sir, another five sir. minutes? Can take some live questions. Uh, let let the organizers decide. I will give it back to organizers. Uh, it is your take, sir. Yeah, we will we'll just take Hello? couple of Hello? Two, couple of questions which are important ah. live, and then we'll go to Vinodji. We'll we'll just extend by five yes. minutes. To, we have lots of questions. Okay, fine. Fine. fine, fine, fine. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Which one? Which one? Uh, Sunita, Sunita, can you can, can you uh, uh, mention your name? Introduce yourself and ask a question, please. Santosh, you can uh, uh, spell out her question. She's just interacting with us. Maybe we could we could move to the next uh, live uh, audience we have, the next attendee, who wants to ask the question. I, we, uh, Sunita yes, Mantri, yes, she is, I think. She, she is from Rajasthan and she is asking about the waste disposal of uh, COVID waste disposal in Rajasthan. So, uh, uh, the facilities uh, are available in the Rajasthan to take care, uh, particularly at Jaipur, uh, Udaipur and other places. Yes. And, uh, uh, if uh, at all uh, there is uh, any shortfall, the government of uh, Rajasthan will take care of that. They, they, uh, the, uh, the deep burial is also accepted uh, method for the treatment of uh, the disposal of the COVID waste. So, you need not be uh, worried about, but only thing is we'll have to avoid the contacts uh, of the environment and the people uh, uh, with the COVID waste. Santosh. Can we, can we ask Ajay to uh, post this question? Ajay, you're online, you can ask a question. Please unmute yourself.
Ajay, unmute, unmute your mic. Hello, hi. Ajay, hi. A little louder, please. Hello, this is Ajay here. Are you able to hear me out? Yes, Ajay, you wrote that. Yes, yes. Go ahead with your question. Well, the plasma paralysis and even Dr. Bharat Bhushan Nagar uh, talked about the plasma technology and what the Institute of Plasma has also talked about. Now, we are a company which has the you know, most advanced uh, uh, plasma technology in the world, which we have been using it uh, with the NASA and with the US Armed Forces for quite a long time, including all kinds of hazardous waste, covered and liquid. And we have been trying to set, bring this technology into India. And from last three years, and from last two years, Dr. Bharat Bhushan Nagar is aware of it, that we have been struggling here in India because the people are not to, people are not open to accepting the newer technologies. Now, if they think that the plasma, which is a hot plasma, has failed earlier because of its high interest, it would not be. The technology is changing every day, but your guidance as to why is there a mental block in accepting newer technology? When we have said that we would be putting an entire money of ours and it will be 100% our Ajay, Ajay, sorry to interrupt. We are, we are short on time. Keep your questions brief. So can I post it to, I think your question was to Bharat. Uh, let him answer this and we move on to the next question. Yeah. Question. Dr. Bharat, the question is to you. You can answer this question. Uh, okay, actually, uh, I, I, I have been uh, in touch with him for, uh, he has been, you know, trying uh, to technology into the Indian country, you know, the plasma the capex intensive, and subsequently, if the equipment is installed, uh, the post service issues are always there actually. But, uh, but of course, the capex and the opex issue has been, uh, you know, the priorities. So uh, I think it would still take some time uh, to, you know, to introduce the focus on uh, biomedical waste or whether it is a focus on hazardous or municipal solid waste. So presently, I think uh, there is still some time, you know, for the, this technology. And the problem is that, you know, the technology is, uh, all the technology is getting uh, imported from abroad. So we don't have any local manufacturing uh, in uh, addition to what is being, you know, provided by I, I, Indian Institute of Plaza and the world. So I feel, you know, that there would be still some time that uh, this technology comes in as a commercial uh, replacement for the other existing Okay, thank you. Can we move to the, uh, the next, uh, next question from uh, Vanita Prasad? So, uh, my question is regarding uh, these patients who are not uh, still asymptomatic and living in the homes without knowing that they are uh, contaminated. They are throwing their mask and uh, everything with the, their regular waste, which is will be a very dangerous thing for the waste management people who are handling. Is there anything for the citizens as such to uh, follow? which has been uh, circulated or something like that? Hello? Hello. Yeah, uh, I will, I will uh, uh, just uh, add into it. Actually, the poor is there, which is the potential uh, to the COVID infection. That is already, this is, finalized, identified by the uh, respective corporations. Even those list is given to the, the operators uh, through the health department of the uh, corporations. And uh, those, those waste are collected separately under yellow color facts and it is practice is happening in the, uh, most of the year. Dr. Supati, I think uh, this, this is what is happening. Yes, right. Uh, right. Yes. So, Nath, uh, uh, in, in Maharashtra, whatever the guidelines we have issued, uh, that specifically the guidelines are there for the non-isolation hospitals and public places as well as self-quarantined homes and 
yes. uh, other suspected uh, patients. You know, there, there we have already requested the, uh, the urban local bodies, the municipal corporations and the public health department to the, take care of those places, so provide them with the uh, yellow bags to the societies and collect okay. the waste in a separately. So, uh, the and that, yes. Yeah, and that is being collected regularly on uh, yes, regular yes. basis. And it is disposed safely. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, thank right. you. Uh, I think there are too many questions. We make them off. Uh, please write into us. You you have our email IDs. We will post them to the panelists and seek answers to your questions. Uh, I would hand over to Dr. Modak uh, uh, for for the closure of this webinar uh, to say the. And also, I would request Katrina to say the, uh, a, a thank you to everyone uh, before right, we sign. Right. Let me first of all thank uh, the or for this arranging this particular seminar and give us uh, giving uh, the opportunity for all the panelists as well as myself to participate in this particular thing i do hope be very useful for especially in the context of the covid-19 pandemic and uh, most of the questions have been i mean uh, answered my my own questions have been uh, sufficiently answered by the panelists and uh, the uh, balance questions which have been coming from the listeners and uh, uh, other participants i request the organizers to kindly collect them and uh, they may be posted to all of us and we will appropriately send the replies to them and they can uh, be taken uh, to the uh, individual uh, persons you know this is, uh, so with this note, I would like to uh, sign off and uh, hand it over to first to Katrina and to the uh, other people uh, from the organizing committee to take this uh, event forward as is appropriate. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mudak. Yeah, also from my side, a very, very big thank you to all of our panelists. In my opinion, it was a very, very interesting and in particular also very helpful um, discussion. And um, it really showed with how many challenges you in particular in the medical waste um, uh, uh, you have to deal with. And uh, I think it was a very enlightening discussion. And again, a very warm thank you um, to all of you. Also, thank you very much you. to our, um, our um, participants. Uh, when I was following the chats and the questions, the Q&As, it was really amazing how many questions and, and comments etc came in so this really shows that um, IFAD India and my colleagues from IFAD India really choose the right topic therefore also thanks to you my colleagues and uh, yeah I'm really already looking forward to the coming webinars because we have set up quite a series of these webinars so thank you very much and looking forward to welcoming you very soon um,